So these are the 15 most carried knives for me this year. And I choose 15 because, you know, I always carry uh, a couple of pocket knives, always one in my front right pocket that represents my main carry of the day. And then I usually have um, a fixed blade knife on me. So I have some fixed blades in this list too. Uh, but so this is the first one here. This is the Concept Main Street, and it's designed by Dirk Pinkerton. And it's just a great svelte workhorse of a knife. It's nice and thin. I, I carry this a lot in my waistband. Uh, nice and thin, but it also uh, feels heavy duty enough uh, that when you do actual hard work with this, and I've done, I don't want to say like super hard work with this, but I've done some work with this knife. Uh, it feels very stout and very capable, even though it's nice and thin. Uh, it comes in a number of different colorways. I like this black and um, <clears throat> uh, what do you call this? Burlap micarta. Really nice. It's 154 cm steel, and uh, that's one of my favorite steels. Uh, oftentimes, there's Dirk Pinkerton's uh, Maker's Mark, and it was mislabeled the Little Main Street, I think this first run of them. Uh, it's on bearings. Very, very, very smooth. Very nice. I like that uh, thumb stud bearing combination. Very gratifying. Uh, this is a nice and sharp knife. 154 cm is a great steel. And I'm not sure how some people think Concept uh, does theirs, but I think this is, it's it's worked for me so far. Uh, so that's number one. Let's see, next up is the Emerson Tiger. Carried this quite a bit this year. Um, I got this in the earlier part of the year on Blade Forums. Uh, just a great secondary market purchase. Uh, this was one of those things where I was like, um, this is on my short list of Emerson's and I was just in one of those moods. I think, I think the mood was, uh, aided by wine. I remember I was cooking, uh, and probably listening to a podcast that was getting me riled up and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, I was in a little Emerson collecting phase and I thought I'm going to log on to Blade Forums and if there's an Emerson, I'm going to buy it. And it was this one and I had been looking for one of these anyway. Super sharp. You've got that chisel grind there. Uh, it's a V-ground bevel, so ground on both sides, but that final edge is a chisel edge, and you can just see how wickedly sharp it is when you look against my uh, my right hand there. Uh, very, very sharp knife. I love, it's just yet another Ernest Emerson clip point. I love his clip point blades. This one reminds me of a broad or fat version of the CQC8. Some kind of, sometimes called the banana blade, an upward uh, sweeping uh, clip point. That was one of uh, Ernest Emerson's first tactical designs. You got the great CQC 13 handle, just locks you in um, with these sort of, with that bird's beak. And in this, of course, it's great in every grip. Uh, even, even in this, you know, some of the Emerson grips are too committal, but this one is not. This is great in this sort of reverse grip if you needed it. Uh, so yeah, Emerson Tiger also has a great big um, uh, wave, so it's a no-miss deployer. Uh, I, as I recall, this was the main carry of Ernest Emerson when he first made it, because he liked it so much. Okay, next up is the Yojimbo, I'm sorry, the Yojumbo by Spyderco and Michael Janich. This is the 4-inch version of the Yojimbo 2. In some ways, this design is less graceful to me. To the eye, it's something about it. It's less perfect and beautiful to the eye um, than the Yojimbo 2. But this thing is just incredible. I mean, in hand, it feels great. Uh, on, the, on the design as it ships, there is a, a little swoop up here, a little partition that separates your two fingers. I did not like that. I got rid of that easy enough to do and the liner the steel liners do not extend up into the peak that was there so you could just knock it down with sandpaper or a, or a dremel and uh just a great four inch version of that straight bladed worn cliff comes to such a super uh fine edge hollow ground it's like a pointy straight razor and uh in hand it's an ergonomic dream I, for me with this knockdown because this is the right distance for me and my medium-sized hands if you have big mitts your finger might go to the other side of it 
or you might just want to sand that down, which is doable also as the liner does not extend up into that G10 peak. I put a, a, a MXG gear clip on this and that made all the difference too. Just, it actually feels really good in the hand too. The other clip was not a pain at all, but with this deep carry clip, it feels even better. Great knife and also great large fidgetable knife. Not too many four inch knives you can do this with. Okay, next up, one I've had for a number of years now, uh, the Microtech SOCOM Elite with carbon fiber and aluminum. I love this knife. Um, this is my dedicated road trip knife uh, because it became that when I first got it because it was the first glass breaker I had on a knife and I decided I'd start some goofy tradition. So this is what I always drive with. Um, but also I just carried this a lot this year because it's just a great knife. Um, I'm interested in checking out the Reich made. Uh, Reich is a Chinese, a high-end Chinese knife manufacturer. They are now um, making the SOCOM Bravo, uh, which is a kind of fancied up version of this knife. And um, it looks beautiful. And I know that Reich knife makes great, great knives, um, but I know it's gonna stick in a lot of craws. Uh, across the land that uh, Microtech is farming out work to China. I'd still love to see it. Uh, who knows, may, may even like to own it, I'm not sure. Uh, but one thing that they did is put the clip tip up, which is one of the, it's the only complaint I've ever had about this knife. Uh, plus, I, I feel, I, I've always felt like the balance on this knife is just slightly blade forward. Um, it's probably right here, the balance. And I feel like with the clip in the back, it would just make it just perfect in terms of balance as well. Uh, but I just love this knife. And to me, this is the most beautiful uh, Tanto that Microtech has ever made. I love this Tanto, this exact one. Beautiful knife, great. Uh, this was the first bearings knife I ever had. I didn't even know there were bearings in there. I just thought it was curiously smooth. Uh, next up is the TRM Atom, and I carried, I, I have two Atoms, and I carried the first one a lot in the first part of the year, and then I got this in August. Uh, for the second part of the year, I carried this a lot. This is a special knife to me because it was made available to me through um, Marianne Halpern, uh, who, uh, of TRM Knives. <clears throat> And uh, she gave this to me for uh, a, a low low cost. It's rare that they put these DLC atoms out. And there were some issues with the coating on this one. So this is a factory second. You can tell by those two dots next to the USA. And uh, so she sold this knife to me at a very nice price. And then she added these beautiful GL Hansen & Sons G Carta. I love that green and purple. So a special knife to me. It's a sentimental knife, but but outside of all of that, you don't care about that. What you care about is how good this knife is, and it is really good. It is. Let's let's look at this again against my hand. Look at how thin it is. I mean, it's very thinly, thinly, finely ground. The edge is perfect. Very very sharp. This this uh, washer action is just super smooth and and sort of hydraulic. I like that term, that, that term works for me. Uh, this one <clears throat> has a stouter pocket clip than my first Atom. The first Atom I had, or I still have it, I'm looking to sell it, I think, um, because I have all the scales I need and you can just swap them out. Um, that being said, I don't know, I might reattach, but the uh, clip on this newer one is stouter. TRM Adam. Next is one I've had for quite a while, but this year I finally finished it. This is my Hinderer XM18 3.5 inch Spanto grind. This was reground uh, at Razor Edge Knives by Josh over there. Awesome dude and just incredible with a grinder. Um, I always love the Spanto design, but the way it comes to you from uh, from the Hinderer factory. It's pretty thick behind the edge and it's just pretty beefy in general. And that's good because it's a beefy knife, but I wanted 
something slicey or something that kind of goes with the blade. I mean, the blade is begging for a hollow grind and then a flat grind up front. And I think that's how uh, the hand ground and original Spantos were done. So anyway, uh, I spent the money on that a few years ago and got that done after I uh, talked to Josh on the show, sent it into him. And, um, well, he did that for me. So there's a lot of money in this knife. I've gotten several scales. I got a, a custom made uh, Python micarta scale for it that I, I had on there for a long time. And then I started to think, eh, does it, do I need that? So I, I ended up, I, I just love the texture and milling on the standard uh, hinderer handles. So I went back and got a micarta, this beautiful burgundy micarta with all of the milling handles. This is a hinderer factory one, so you know, it just fit right on there perfectly. So this knife basically was finished this year and I carried it a lot this year. I didn't realize it was a work in progress, but it definitely was. And, uh, you know, the, the grind, the regrind definitely turned this into just about my sharpest knife, if not my sharpest. Uh, but that was a few years ago. It was getting this scale, got it back in my pocket like full time this year. Again, this one is a uh, S35VN. This is a Gen 4, I believe. The generation right before the <clears throat> triway pivot. Next up is my Spartan Harzy. Love this folder. Spartan Harzy folder. Um, you can't just say Spartan Harzy because there's a Spartan Harzy dagger, there's a Spartan Harzy defensa, there are a, there are a number of blades that uh, Bill Harzy designed for Spartan. I have this one and I have the dagger, which is just a beautiful work of art. But this thing, or design, cutlery, uh, this thing is just amazing. To me, this, this embodies everything uh, about the knife you just saw, and then the knife you're going to see after this. Maybe I should have put this after the two. But to me, this is everything about Hinderer that I love, the XM18, and everything about Chris Reeve knives that I love. It's just so stout and classic. It's classic looking. The design is classic Bill Harzy. You look at this, you know it's a Bill Harzy design, which makes it perfect for Spartan, if you ask me, because their designs are utilitarian, but they're, they also are something about them commands a uh, respect because they're classical sort of combat design driven designs but meant for okay i'm gonna stop right there you can see this you know about this knife it is awesome it really really is that awesome you don't have any uh lightning pockets in the back of this titanium which adds to the solid wonderful feel of this knife it's got uh, the washers in there. Uh, I think they're, I actually don't know what they are. Let me see. Pretty sure they're phosphor bronze, but I haven't, I don't even think I've disassembled this. And then I have my logo in it, which means a lot. And I uh, love this knife. This gets a lot of carry time. I would love to have this reground too and have it hollow ground, but I don't know. Somehow, just haven't yet. All right, next up. This was the year I really came into this knife. I've had it for five, five, almost six years. This was made on Leap Day 2016, according to the birth card. And uh, I had a short Chris Reeve Sabenza uh, fascination in 2016. I bought this with the black micarta inlays. And then I didn't carry it much. And it just sort of was a safe clean. And then... This year, I really started carrying it a lot. After uh, I got an edge put on it, nice uh, Jared Neve put this on um, by hand. After I got that edge on, I, I just wanted to carry it more. And I love this. I love this knife, and I've really grown to appreciate its design. Simple as it may be, I used to say, oh, it doesn't get my heart racing. But this is a classic beauty, as opposed to, you know, the... Foxy Mama of the Month, you know, this is a classic. This is, this is, uh, you know, this is your Marilyn Monroe. This is your Rita Hayworth right here. And, um, well, anyway, Rita Hayworth cuts really wonderfully. I love this super fine hollow grind and the way they do this sharpening choil here. Um, you can keep grinding this, you know, with, with that sharpening choil and with the, with the depth of the hollow grind, you can keep grinding this for a long 
time and you can remove a lot of steel and still be able to have a cutting edge on this awesome knife. As 35VN as per usual. I guess now they're doing them in 45. All right, next up was a knife I got uh, this summer, this past summer, from Levon of Knife Nuts Podcast and from Russia with Levon. This is a, uh, he's got an importing business bringing in really cool knives from Russia. Uh, from Russian designers, mostly made in China, like this one. Uh, this is the Crystal Aurora, designed by Ivan Braganets. I believe his maker's mark is uh, right there. Well, that's not his mark. I have his mark on something else, I think. Uh, but that's the Crystal design or um, logo there. And then look at all of this milling. I love this lined milling, and the way it's selectively placed it has the it's like jimping in a way it, it has the same effect it's great for grip it's not just there for for tactile uh, feedback it's not just there for for looks you really it, it gives great grip without getting obnoxious about it and it's great for pulling out of your pocket all of these uh north to south lines uh, all that said, just a really cool knife. I mean, what really got me is this giant fuller. Uh, I saw that on an Instagram post, and I was just like, oh, my God, I got to have this. And I ordered it from bed without even getting up on a Saturday, I remember. Uh, so very, very, very sharp. This knife is very, very, very sharp. And uh, I feel like I, I can't quite tell, and but I feel like the whole thing was like, fully hollow ground and then they remove these giant fullers here and it's just really intensely sharp there um, but just light you can look down in the titanium slab there and see pocketing it's very light the action is great it's on bearings uh, uh, the thumb studs are also the blade stops and they work great um, and the cool thing about it is that you have to nudge it shut again it's like that hydraulic feel I was talking about before. Like comes out like on bearings and then it goes in more like a Sebenza. And I don't know how they did that or if that was on purpose, but it's very pleasing to me, as is this whole, this whole damn knife. Great pajama knife, great shorts knife. All right, last folder of the bunch. Yes, the Demco 8020, carried this a lot this year. Um, I got it in the summer and insisted on carrying this in some shorts it is a it is a it is a bit of a beast it's a it's a thick heavy duty beautiful knife with this incredible shark lock this thing is just so cool it's very strong and also has the fidget factor of course just like for days um, the jimping on this thing is, it depends on it, and it's excellent. Here, it's for, uh, on the back of the shark lock, it's good for a thumb ramp for um, this kind of saber grip thing here. Grip thing, you know what I mean, saber grip. Or, uh, but to pull it back and to actuate it, you just grab that, that jimping, these little fine jimps are perfect. They grab your finger, falls in beautifully this jimping is bigger and works great uh doesn't kill the the thumb but would also work great with gloves you can choke up here you don't even feel that shark lock i mean let me squeeze really hard yeah you see you see the indentation a little bit but it just fits the hand this is the thing when i first was introduced to this concept of the shark lock uh, I believe it was on the first Knife Junkie podcast that he was on, by the by, go check it out. Uh, it was, I thought, oh, it's going to be in the way. It's going to be like a secondary lock on so many uh, folders that have come and gone that, but no, no, somehow they have designed this. He has designed this perfectly. I guess this has something to do with it, but designed it perfectly so that it just does not get in the way, even when you choke up even when you choke up. Now, all that being said, it's not like I've processed tons of wood with this knife in this position for a while. I suspect maybe that would start to grate on you a little bit, but with gloves, I don't even think you'd feel it. 
It's got this beautiful burgundy scale. I've been really getting into burgundy. And I, I, I don't like to be goofy and thematic like that. You know, like uh, I had a wonderful uh, friend and secretary or uh, executive assistant at work. She was not my executive assistant, but she was someone that I dealt with a lot. And everything was purple. And she was such a wonderful person. But I was always kind of like, everything? Everything purple? Well, I'm starting to feel like her. Deb, your influence has rubbed off because I just want burgundy. I love burgundy on my handles. All right. <clears throat> 80, 20. Now, with the fixed blade knives... Alex Steingraber Shark in Crewwear. I carried this a lot when I first got it. Well, for about the first few months after I got it. Because this is a fixed blade knife that carries very easily. And I don't I didn't even carry this one my normal way, which is in the three o'clock position in the waistband with the edge facing forward like this. Uh here's the outside of my waistband. I did not carry it like that. I carried it on the front. It's it's just the right size. It actually uh blends under a sweater or 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 chamois shirt or something like that and uh but it's so useful this knife is incredibly ground alex steingraber can can you can even hear it he can grind a knife to beat the band cpm crew wear um you can actually use this defensively uh i've done some noodling around with it in this sort of reverse pickle grip it's actually quite quite comfortable you can turn this this uh, attractive little utility knife into a deadly uh, defensive knife if need be. But, of course, we don't need be. But it's always nice to think of. All right, next up, carry this a lot this year. The uh, Copus Designs Elvia collaboration with Ed Calderon. And I put, my, uh, put some twine on there and shellacked it. Uh, I just like that to... Bulk it up just a little bit and give it a little bit of grip because this is pretty... I didn't need to clean that up a little bit. But this is pretty uh, slick. So I wanted a, a, a grippy area of the handle, but I didn't want it to get too bulky and thick. Uh, this has worked out perfectly because I can drop it in my pocket and it's like nothing. But what this drawstring is for, I've taken to fix uh clipping this to my belt or just looping it around my belt around uh nine o'clock on my pants like my nine o'clock belt loop and then snake this around the front and then this just sits in the top of my waistband like this you know a little handle sticking out it's comfortable you can sit down you can drive all sorts of stuff so this knife is really cool and then you just tug it boom you got that and then plus if you drop it in the bottom of your pocket you have this little hook that as you're removing it from your pants pocket, if you have nothing on, no one knows you've got it in your pocket. As you remove it, that stays in your pocket. Boom, you come out with a with a knife. So a pretty cool little defensive option. <clears throat> They're hard to come by. This is 154 cm. They uh, release them in runs. Uh, you can go to Copus Designs or uh, Knives Ship Free. I know that's where I got this one. I know they do the uh, the exclusive dealer drops of that. I believe. All right, next up, this was my, well, let's see, I'll go to this one first. Uh, this one is the JB Knife and Tool uh, Ditch Pick, and just a knife I've always admired and thought was beautiful. Uh, I happened to be there on time for a drop and got in on it, and he was offering double edge, and I said, yes, double edge mine, please. Uh, ordinarily, this is a Pical knife with the... Uh, you know, you're supposed to hold it like this with the tip down and the edge in. But I figure why not have the, the forward edge also, you know. If you're going to get a knife like this, why not? And, uh, of course, I have a fascination and love uh, with these kind of knives, tactical knives, defensive knives. And uh, have some, I have quite a bit of martial arts training with them. But I've never been in a street fight with, with a knife. And so... Who knows, you know, but it still fascinates me and I still love these, these kind of knives, impractical as they may be. The Ditch Models by JB Knife and Tool refers to this tiny, thin blade stock. I believe that's a sixteenth of an inch and it's like a cheap steak knife thin, uh, but they've done a lot of testing with these and it's way uh, sturdier than you might imagine being that thin. 
proudly Texas made. <clears throat> okay, next up, this is the one that I carried the most this year, uh, the fixed blade. This is the Voodoo by Eric Kramer. Um, Eric Kramer Custom Knives, not to be mistaken with Bob Kramer, who makes custom kitchen knives, I believe. Um, just my favorite model of his. And uh, just sprang for it. I freaking love it. It's very thin. So this is why it's, it, this, this is what makes it very carryable, especially in that three o'clock position on my side. It's very thin. It's rounded. It's got a short enough handle that it's not some giant handle sticking up. But important is that it's rounded and it doesn't stick in my ribs when I'm driving and it doesn't, you know, interrupt the flow of my love handles when I'm just, you know, being. Uh, so yeah, definitely, you know, even though you might be tempted with a defensive knife uh, to have some pointy thing here for skull crushing and stuff, there are a number of reasons why you want a rounded handle. Uh, the skull crusher, first of all, hurts for you to put your thumb on, and you're going to need to put your thumb on if you're actually using this thing that way. And, uh, and also, it's going gonna, it's gonna to stick in your ribs, it's going to jab you, it's going to be uncomfortable, you're not going to carry it, therefore it won't be there when you need it. Uh, this is, uh, Eric Kramer describes this as a Persian, I describe it as a clip point, because I love that clip, and uh, asked him to sharpen it, the clip, and he did. Now it's a pretty oblique edge there, but you can definitely split and gouge and tear with it, so, you know, what else do you need from a clip on a clip point knife? <clears throat> very very hollow ground another guy who can really really grind a blade so this is the kramer knives custom uh voodoo and by the way this is my favorite kind of clip these discrete concept uh, carry concepts clips are just awesome snakes over uh, these work either just on your pants or they work uh to come up over the belt so really really nice uh, lastly, I have a feeling this is going to be my most carried next year because I got this recently. I've been carrying it every day. Uh, this is my Hogtooth Knives EDC Tanto. There's Hogtooth Knives. Uh, Matt Chase of Hogtooth Knives is the gentleman that made that amazing um, Loveless Fighter for me for my birthday this year. That's an amazing knife. What do I, what do I have on here? Um, let me see if I can rub that up. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is a great knife. I saw uh, a viewer sent me a uh, an email saying, "Check out what I got." <laughs> I know you love this guy, and he was uh, he was in the New England Knife Show, and I said, "Oh, I have to get me one." And so I I got in touch with Matt, and he sent me a picture of this one that has this really lovely G10 and <clears throat> alternating rubberized uh, layer. Uh, laminate handle. This thing is awesome. Great knife. Very, very sharp. Hollow ground 154 cm. Uh, just this thing, I used this to do feather sticks uh, one time, and it just it was amazing. And it beat all of the options I had brought out, thinking, you know, more outdoorsy options I was going to feather stick with before, before lighting it with a bick for the family uh, fire pit. This thing is killer, and a great sheath, too. Also, he sets it up for discrete carry uh, concepts clip, which I definitely appreciate. By far, though, the most carried knife of this year has been my Diagnostic by uh, Bastinelli Knives. This rides on the back of my uh, whoops, uh, back of my ID at work, and it it is a fantastic little cutter it's a great i mean it's great for letter opening it's great for uh box i mean you could after a while it would wear that little tip down but this of course is a defensive knife and and uh i just absolutely love it but it's on me all the time whenever i'm at work i have this on me and uh you've got it's a chisel grind n690 very very sharp and i got it a little mirrored there and just a great little little hawk bill. It's not a karambit, though it has a lot of, well, I guess you could call it a two-finger karambit. It has a lot of qualities of a karambit, but you wouldn't, you know, there are different ways you can hold it to, to make it more menacing. Uh, that would just break your finger. I don't know, these different things I mess around with, but this is what I keep coming back to. 
great little knife. Uh, all right, well, I've gone long enough. Thanks, uh, thanks for watching if you've stuck around this long. Take care.